name is Minister Barton Aaron Porter. And today we're going to go into our Father's Word for another exciting Bible study. Now, I'm going to be using the good old King James Version of the Holy Bible as I always do. So I encourage you to get your Bibles out and to study along with me. Let's approach our Heavenly Father's throne with a word of prayer before we get into this video. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we come with bowed heads and humble hearts, confessing our many sins, Lord, asking that you forgive us, wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Savior of the world. We put all our hope and trust in that precious blood he shed for us at Calvary, Lord. And we ask right now, Almighty God, that you fill us with your precious Holy Spirit, as we go into your word, the Holy Bible, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we thank you, Almighty God, for hearing our prayer. Amen. Can a Christian be demon-possessed? Now, most people would immediately say, no, no way. Well, we're going to find out today whether or not a Christian could be possessed by an evil spirit. We're going to start our Bible study with a scripture found in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. It says, ye are of God, little children, the apostle writes to the believers. He says, ye are of God, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So greater is God, the Holy Spirit that dwells inside the believer than Satan who's controlling the world. That is a fact. All right. So a lot of people off the strength of that verse says a Christian can't be demon possessed. Well, let's keep going. First John chapter five, verse 18 and 19. John writes, we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. This actually means Whosoever is born of God does not willfully and consistently practice sin because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And in the first chapter of 1 John, he stated, if anybody say they have no sin, they are deceiving themselves and they're calling God a liar. So you got to be familiar with all of the scripture to understand sometimes what he actually means. So he's saying, we know that whosoever is born of God does not willfully and consistently practice sin. That's what he's actually saying. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. That means he stays focused on the word of God and serving God. And that wicked one touches him not. So if we stay focused on God, Satan cannot get inside of us, him or none of his demons. He says in 19, and we know that we are of God. And the whole world life in wickedness. So Satan got the majority of them, but he doesn't have us all. And so he said, we stay focused on God. Satan can't touch us. And that is a fact. The devil has to have permission from God to tempt us. And then he has to have our willingness in order for him to take us, possess us, or persuade us to do something. We have to agree with him. Otherwise, he can't do that to a Christian. But he does persuade Christians sometimes. In 1 Chronicles chapter 21, verse 1 says, And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. Now that word provoked, when you look it up in the Strong's Concordance, is the Hebrew word suf. It means to prick, that is figuratively stimulate by implication to seduce. So Satan stood up to seduce King David. He said, go ahead and count your great army. Count them. Now, God didn't tell David to do this. Verse 2 says, and David said unto Joab, which was the general of his army, and to the rulers of the people, go number Israel from Beersheba even to Dan, and bring the number of them to me that I may know it. So he listened to the devil. The devil tricked him. Verse 3, and Joab answered, the Lord make his people an hundred times so many more as they be. But my Lord, the king, are they not all my Lord's servants? Why then does my Lord require this thing? 
Why will he be a cause of trespass to Israel? So the general said, hey man, God can multiply his people as much as he wants to. He said, what do you want to know how many people are in Israel from Beersheba to Dan? He said, you're going to bring the judgment of God upon us. You shouldn't do this, in other words. So he was warned. That was God warning him. God will never allow a temptation to come from the devil upon you without giving you a chance to escape, to not listen to it or not fall for it. Let's see what happens. Verse 4. Nevertheless, the king's word prevailed against Joab. Wherefore, Joab departed and went throughout all Israel and came to Jerusalem. Now, if you read the rest of the verses, Joab did it because he had to do it, but he didn't do exactly what David told him. He didn't count two tribes. He said, I'm not doing it because I shouldn't be doing it. So he counted a certain number and came back and told him. And it this thing really displeased God. Now, when we jump down to verse 7, it says, and God was displeased with this thing. Therefore, he smote, that means he started killing, he plagued Israel. Verse 8, and David said unto God, I have sinned greatly because I have done this thing. But now I beseech thee, I urge you, do away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. So he asked God to stop. But God gave him three options. He says, you pick which one you want to happen to you, if you read the rest of this. And David didn't want to pick. He just, he just said, please, just bring the judgment upon me and my family. But God brought it upon Israel. And uh, he plagued the people, and a certain number of them died. Now, when you read this account in the book of Samuel, you'll see that Israel was doing something that they weren't supposed to do. This is why God did it that way. He just used David's slip up as an excuse to do it. Say, God will not destroy the righteous. I don't want anybody to ever think that. He will not do it. Okay? So the, Israel was guilty and David was guilty. But my point is, Satan was able to seduce this man of God. You see that? Okay, we have another example in Matthew chapter 16. After Christ asked his disciples who he was and the Spirit revealed to them that he was the Christ. Peter said, thou art the Christ. That means the Messiah, the son of the living God. And he said, blessed art thou Simon Barjona, or Simon son of Jonah." He says, for flesh and blood has not revealed it to you, but my Father in heaven has revealed it to you. And let's see what happens. Verse 21 says, from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. 22. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. So Peter said, no, 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 don't tell me that. That's not going to happen to you, Lord. Verse 23. But he, that is Jesus, turned and said unto Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. You see what he said? Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Now, when you look up the word savoreth, in the Strong's Concordance, it means to exercise the mind that is entertained or have a sentiment or opinion. So he's saying, you have allowed the devil to enter into your heart and, and, and you're thinking selfishly. You're telling me I'm not going to suffer and die if, and be raised the third day? If I don't do that, the whole world's going to be lost. You're, you're just thinking selfishly. You don't want me to leave you. You want to just stay with me and keep traveling with me and and hearing me preach and heal people. And he said, uh-uh, that's not what God sent me to do. So when we start relying on the flesh, we open the door for Satan. So that's why it's so important that we study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And we stick to the word of God. The sweet summer's King David says, thy word I have hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. So the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Acknowledge him in all of thy ways and he will direct your path. So that's how Satan was able to persuade Peter to say what he said. 
Now, these David and Peter were not possessed by the devil, but they were influenced. They were seduced for a moment. Okay, in John chapter 6, verse 70, it reads, Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil. That word devil, when we look it up in the Strong's Concordance, it's one, two, two, eight. It means a traducer, especially Satan. A traducer is one who traduces, one who maligns another by making malicious and false or inflammatory statements. That's what Satan is. He's a slanderer. So he said, one of you 12 is just like Satan. Verse 71 says, he spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the 12. Now, this was one of Christ's followers. And the Lord says he was a devil. And the reason why, because Ju uh, Judas Iscariot had a greed problem, so he allowed the demons, a demon to come in him. And that's how the devil was able to use him to betray Christ. So, yes, there are some Christians who can have demonic spirits in them. Matter of fact, there's a whole bunch of so-called Christians who have a religious spirit. They're not adhering to the word of God, but the traditions of the organizations that they belong to. That's a false spirit misleading them. They're following the traditions of man instead of the word of God. And so, yes, there are some Christians out there who have allowed the devil to come in and take up residence in them. Let's read a little bit more about Judas. John chapter 13, verse 21, it says, When Jesus had thus said he was troubled, in spirit and testify and said verily verily which means truly truly i say unto you that one of you shall betray me this was at after the last supper 22 then the disciples looked one on another doubting of whom he spake how can any of us be a traitor we follow jesus that's what they were thinking 23 now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. That, that would be John. 24. Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. So Peter pointed to John says he was laying over there close to him. He said, ask him. Ask him who it is. 25. He then lying on Jesus' breast said unto him, Lord, who is it? 26. Jesus answered, he it is to whom I shall give a sop, which is a little morsel of bread, when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, the little morsel of bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. So he answered that question. 27. And after the sop, after the little morsel that he dipped, after he took it, Satan entered into him. Then Jesus said unto him, that thou doeth, doeth quickly. He said, go do your dirt. You done sold out, gone. And so there are some so-called Christians who can be possessed by devils. All right? And when we jump down a little further in this chapter, it says in verse 28, Now no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him. So they didn't understand. They didn't get it. 29. For some of them thought, because Judas had the bag, you know, he was the one who carried the money bag around, that Jesus had said unto him, buy those things that we have need of against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. So they thought, oh, he wants Judas to go get some more stuff for the feast, or go give something to the poor. Verse 30, it says, he then having received the sop, went immediately out, and it was night. So he went on out to do what Satan had misled him to do. In the account in Luke 22 and 3, it says, Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. Verse 4, And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him, that is Jesus, unto them. And so there are some Christians who are demon-possessed, but they're really not Christians. Okay, my brothers and sisters in Christ, I want to tell you about an app that I learned about. It's been out for a while, 
I'm just not coming into the knowledge of it. The app is called WhatsApp. You can download it for free from the App Store. And the incredible thing about this app is you can call people anywhere over the world as long as they have the WhatsApp app and you use it for free. You can send videos, you can send text messages, and you can send pictures. So I encourage you guys to download WhatsApp. And that way you can communicate with yours truly anytime you want to and it won't cost you a penny. If this particular Bible study has been a blessing to you and you want to bless me with a love gift of any amount, this is how you can do that. Go to paypal.com, download the PayPal app. It's free. Then you would use this code to send me your love gift. PayPal.me slash Barton Porter. You can also download the free cash app. My code is cash.app slash dollar sign Barton1014. And then there are people who prefer Zelle. For Zelle, all you need is my name, Barton Porter, and my phone number, which is 630-441-4563. Now, here are non-financial ways you can be a blessing to yours truly in this ministry. I need your prayer, saints. Pray for Minister Porter and pray for this ministry. And share the Bible study videos. If you're being blessed or encouraged or taught through this ministry, share these Bible study videos with as many people as possible. And if you have any Bible questions or prayer requests, you can call me at 630-441-4563. I live in Illinois, so I'm in the central time zone. And if you don't have a phone, you can email me, bartonaaronporter at gmail.com. I need you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please hit the subscribe button. It does not cost you a penny. And underneath the video also, after you hit the subscription button, there's a little bell icon Click on that bell icon. That bell is the notification icon. Every time a video is released, you will get a notification. And underneath the video, there's two thumbs, one up, one down. If you like my video, if you like the content, please take the time to hit that thumbs up button. And please take the time to put something in the comment section.